Hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this key fact to go ahead and compare improper integrals with improper integrals to determine whether or not the given improper integral converges or diverges. Now, remember we said that if we have the integral, improper integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p power d of x, we know that the improper integral will converge if p is greater than 1, and it will diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the reason why we needed this key fact. The reason why we needed that key fact is because we need to go ahead and compare a given improper integral with an improper integral that we know converges or diverges. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example. If we were to go ahead and take the integral from 1 to infinity of x over 2x to the fifth plus 3x squared plus 1 d of x, determine whether or not that converges or diverges. Now, if we try to go ahead and integrate that, oh boy, I'm not exactly sure how we would go ahead and approach that integral, being that it's so complicated. But, what we need to do, again, is not determine what it converges to. We just need to know what whether or not it converges or diverges. Okay, so let's go ahead and let this function here be f of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to a function that's similar to this. Now notice the function that I'm comparing it to is just going to be 1 over 2x to the fourth. And now how am I coming out with 1 over 2x to the fourth? I'm coming out with 1 over 2x to the fourth is because I'm more or less just covering this part up here. And I'm simplifying that to 1 over 2x to the 4th, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm going to compare it to this particular function here. And I'm going to call that function g of x. Now notice, this one here is much more simple, okay? And that's why we're going to compare it to this one. Now, if I go ahead and analyze this simpler function, I know that this is going to be the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2x to the 4th d of x. I can, of course, factor out the 1 half and I come up with the integral from 1 to infinity of 1x to the 4th d of x. I don't have to go any further with this one because I know for a fact that if I have this situation where p is greater than 1, this particular improper integral is going to converge. Okay, now remember, again, I don't need to know what it converges to, I just need to know that it converges. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at why this comparison is going to be very helpful for us. Now, for all values of x on the integral from 1 to infinity, because that's our limits of integration, notice that f of x and g of x are all greater than 0. In addition to that, when I go ahead and I take a look at f of x and g of x, and, I'm going ahead, and I went ahead and I tried to give a very qualitative graph about where f of x and g of x are, g of x, which is 1 over 2x to the 4th, if I substitute the value of 1 into that, I'm going to come up with 1 half. If I substitute the value of 1 into f of x, I come up with 1 over 6. Now, if I just go ahead and continue to think about what's happening here, this particular function, the denominator is going to be larger, always larger, than this denominator here, which means that as a number, this number is smaller than that number. So, what I know then is that if I was to go ahead and just qualitatively graph g of x and f of x, g of x will always be greater than or equal to f of x. Okay? Now, how does that help us? Well, let's go ahead and think about this by the comparison test for improper angles. As I know that 0 is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to g of x for all x, if I was to go ahead and take the integral, of these two functions here, then what I have is from 1 to infinity of f of x d of x less than or equal to the integral from 1, of 1 to infinity of g of x d of x. I already know that this one is going to converge. Being that I know that this one is going to converge, this converging value, of course, will be larger, or uh, sorry, the integral from 1 over infinity of f of x d of x is going to be less than or equal to this converging, fa converging value and greater than or equal to 0. Which means then, that that has to converge as well. So, notice what happens is that this completely crazy looking integral 
improper integral for that matter as well, we can actually go ahead and determine whether or not it is going to converge or diverge just by comparing it to something that we know is either going to converge or diverge. Okay, and if we set up this type of logic here, we'll be able to make some general generalizations or some or we'll be able to generate some results and some conclusions about whether these type of complex improper integrals converge or diverge. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the comparison test. And this is what the comparison test says. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to go ahead and understand how it works. It says, suppose that zero is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to g of x, of course, for all x in the domain. Then if the integral from one over infinity, the integral from one to infinity of g of x, d of x, if this one converges, then that means that the integral from one over f, one to infinity of f of x, d of x converges as well. This one has to converge as well. If this one converges, that one has to converge as well if you take the improper integral from 1 to infinity. Now take a look at the other situation. Now if we go ahead and find out that 1 to infinity of f of x d of x diverges, if this one diverges, then of course what that means then is that this one has to diverge as well. Now the one thing that we have to be careful of is that we, won't, we don't want to choose a g of x over here that is actually going to uh, diverge. Because if this one diverges, then who knows what's going to happen with this one. In the same respect, we don't want to choose an f of x that is actually going to converge. Because if it converges, who knows exactly what's going to happen with g of x. Okay, so it's very particular that you have to understand how we need to go ahead and compare and choose the appropriate f of x and g of x in order to go ahead and make some conclusions about whether those improper integrals, which are not integrative, which are not integratable, converge or diverge. Okay, so let's just wrap things up. Notice that we have improper integrals that are going to be unable, we are not going to be able to integrate. So how can we determine whether these converge or diverge? We can use the comparison test. In order for us to use the comparison test, we need to know exactly what function to compare it to. And the key fact here, with these simple, uh, with these simple improper integrals, improper integrals are going to give us a very good means by which we can go ahead and select appropriate functions, improper improper integrals, to go ahead and compare the complex integral to, to compare to, in order to determine whether or not the complex improper integral converges or diverges. Okay. So again, this is just going to have to take some practice. We're going to have to see how all of this works together, and we'll do a lot of these problems in class. So see you next time. Bye-bye.